So I'm Alan Payton, I'm Head of Science Collections at Kew. My job is to look after this wonderful collection which surrounds us. So when you walk through Kew Gardens, you see this beautiful garden with one of the best varieties of living plants anywhere. Over 300 acres, over 1.4 million visitors a year, seeing one of the most diverse displays of plants anywhere on the planet. We are standing in a herbarium building in one of our oldest wings. In this building, we have got 7 million preserved plant specimens from all around the world. We have got over 450 scientists working. Q's digitization project involves more than 100 people. It's a four-year project. We're halfway through, we're on track. But the aim of that project is to digitize all our scientific specimens, fungi and plants, 8 million specimens, and make them available over the internet to anybody, anywhere. At the moment, we have to come to queue, we have to open the cupboards, look at our specimens individually. But there's so many people who just can't make it here. By digitizing these collections, we're turning a collection inside out so anybody can use it. Not only for the questions we might have, but the questions they might have. You're allowing other people to innovate with our data. I'm Johnny Davis, uh, Imaging Support Officer on the digitization project here at Kew Gardens. And my role here is to uh, train our amazing team of digitizers and to maintain and calibrate our camera stations. I find Fujifilm on this project to be a marker of high quality imaging. So. These images are being made for uh, scientific research, so two things are very important. They have to be high quality and as such high resolution, but they also have to be incredibly accurate as well. So the Fujifilm cameras that we use here have a medium format sensor. So if you think about that like a canvas, we are able to uh, paint a plant onto that canvas at a very large size. That's the sort of difference that we're getting with the Fujifilm medium format sensor. I'm Katie, I'm a digitization officer here at the Q Digitization Project. Some of our specimens are quite small and fragile. And so here I'm just gently opening up the capsule and weighting it down. And I also like to um, sort of think about why we're taking these images and what they'll be used for. If the materials um, sort of jumbled up like this in the capsule, I'll very gently move it around so you can see clearly each separate plant pot. So we use these keyboard shortcuts, command space to take a picture, um, command A to uh, select a rule that we can rename the file because it really increases and helps with our speed as we sort of get into the flow of um, taking the images, moving the specimens away, bringing in a new specimen and then we can check, rename take the photo and continue like that. We want our researchers to be able to really interrogate those images so once they're sat at their computers uh, researching these images across the globe they'll be able to really zoom in and out of those images and see those tiny hairs on the stems or that texture and structure of the leaf. So we have 41 stations set up with cameras managed by Max Communications our partners. Those images are then sent to India, they are transcribed we come back in the queue, we join the two things together and we make them available. So we're digitizing about 16 to 17,000 specimens a day. Over two years, we've done about three and a half million to four million specimens, but we've got eight million. It's great to be partnering with Fujifilm to enable us to capture the images of our specimens. But when we're finished, we'll have a brilliant tool to study plant diversity the world over. You can use it, for example, to plan future exhibitions, to provide data to our partners to understand where specimens are collected and where we haven't been collected, so they can focus plant collection activities, perhaps to some of the more threatened places which we have very little information about. Several natural history museums over time have had fires and specimens have been lost. Digitizing helps to preserve some of the information about this very valuable collection, open to everybody to use it for whatever purposes they want to, whether it's conservation planning, looking at the effects of climate change and plant diversity. Because of that data being freely available, they can begin to innovate with it. I'm so excited about what this means to all of us, our future and our planet.